there is currently an epidemic of loneliness amongst men in the Western world. Recent stats show that 15% of men in the United States say they have no close friends, a 12% increase since 1990. And it's the same story here in the UK, with the number of British men claiming to have at least six close friends halving from 55% to 27% in recent years. My own research can attest to this too. Having spoken directly with a small sample size of men, who have taken the masculine archetypes test that I set up online to help men discover their archetype energy so they can better understand themselves. A common theme that jumped out to me in the conversations I had was a feeling of lack of community, isolation and loneliness, particularly with regard to being able to discuss these concepts of the masculine archetypes with other men. That was true for men living in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, or Australia. In this video, we'll explore the reasons why men become socially detached and how you can overcome loneliness and isolation. Robert Moore's exploration of male psychology reveals this problem of loneliness and detachment among men often stems from an imbalance in magician energy, leading to excessive detachment, compulsive work, and overly intellectual approaches to life. While some detachment is necessary for personal growth, it becomes problematic when compulsive and unbalanced with other archetypal energies. Moore identifies several reasons for male loneliness. These are detachment as a defense mechanism, Moore notes that men with significant magician energy might use detachment as a defense mechanism because they can't handle certain relationships. Compulsive detachment is another reason, which indicates an imbalance in integrating other aspects of the psyche. Another reason is unhealthy expressions of celibacy, which stems from an inability to relate to others. This would include men who are incels in this category. And lastly, a common one, which is isolation in middle age, often following life events like divorce. Obviously avoiding commitment can lead to greater loneliness. Commitment requires responsibility, which requires maturity, which is the issue with men today. The path forward involves embracing meaningful connections and commitments despite the perceived risks. True fulfillment comes from integrating all four archetypes, king, warrior, magician, and lover. A life rich in relationships and community offers not just companionship, but a sense of purpose, continuity, and spiritual fulfillment. This was the central message of Robert Moore's lectures. This is your place of transformative space the space of the, the magician, the priest, and the priestess. This is the space of transformation. This is the space of uh, uh, the magician in his or her study. And this is uh, the place of, there's a real detachment here. In fact, clinically, whenever you're dealing with detached personalities, they operate a lot out of this space. You know, a person that's flooded with lover energy doesn't really know when they invade somebody else's space. Well, you know, when somebody invades your space once, you try to grin and bear it. If they invade it twice, then it begins to be a little irritable. Have you ever tried living with somebody you know? This is not familiar. It's not familiar. Yeah. <laughs> So it's very interesting. It, 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 you see the dynamic tension in that question, and see then you because without that warrior energy in there to maintain a boundary, so you feel like you won't be constantly being invaded and uh, sort of squashed. You won't. You will be alone. You will choose to be promiscuous and alone for the most part, alone. Uh, what happens to a lot of people that have got so much love or energy and they're very promiscuous, then they try that for a while, but it's so painful 
that they, then they begin to detach and they move into this sort of trickster magician sector and they start increasingly living alone, being alone. They, they, they back out, they start detaching in the, into sort of asocial modes. You know with all this magician stuff that the way out is detachment. There is no way out as a king or queen. You got to be clear about this. King and queen equate with sacrifice. There's no difference. The archetype of sacrifice is in the king and queen sector. So if you've got lots of king or queen energy, you tend to be a little masochistic. Unless, as he puts it, you're absolutely right, unless you happen to have a lot of warrior developed, then this person has a hard time setting limits on other people's demands. And when they have to set limits, they disappear and detach. I don't answer your phone call. I really meant to, but <laughs> but I didn't. Now, of course, detachment in itself is not pathological at all. If you're not detached, if you can't be detached enough, you won't have any time for reflection. There won't be any protected space for your reflection. There won't be any temple. So it, that in itself is not pathological at all. But if you're compulsively detached, it's pathological. And that's the thing about an archetypal possession. It always makes you compulsively something. Robert Moore suggests several strategies and perspectives to overcome loneliness and isolation. Engage in public and communal activities. Moore highlights the importance of investing yourself in activities that are not private, but for the common good, such as mentoring and being involved in public responsibilities. This helps in creating a sense of belonging and purpose. He also suggests joining groups that focus on communal and ecological concerns, mentioning Greenpeace as an example, which can provide a sense of connection and purpose. Develop and integrate different archetypal energies. Moore emphasizes the importance of integrating different aspects of the psyche, such as the warrior, lover, magician, and king energies. This balance can help you feel more whole and connected. He also recommends using techniques like active imagination to connect with inner archetypal figures, such as the king, which can offer a sense of support and guidance. Engage in reflective and creative activities. For those who need to develop their magician energy, activities like journaling or long-term in-depth therapy can be very useful. These activities facilitate reflection and self-awareness. For developing lover energy, engaging in artistic activities, therapeutic massage, and sensate experiences can help individuals feel more connected to their bodies and emotions. Physical training and assertiveness training. By taking part in activities like martial arts or sports, you can help develop warrior energy, which is crucial for setting boundaries and defending yourself. This can reduce anxiety and improve relationships by making you more assertive and confident. Spiritual practices. While detachment itself is not pathological, spiritual practices that involve detachment can help individuals find a sense of peace and purpose beyond their immediate social interactions. Addressing pathological detachment is important. Moore points out that while some level of detachment is necessary for reflection, Compulsive detachment can be pathological. You must engage in the world and seek connections rather than retreating into self-imposed isolation. By following these strategies, men can work towards overcoming loneliness and isolation, finding a deeper sense of connection, purpose, and belonging. For the Empowerment community, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out Warrior, Magician, Lover, King by Rod Boothroyd. What sets this book apart are the practical tips and exercises that Rod provides. These tools are designed to help you reconnect with your inner self, embrace your passions, and ultimately become the man you were always meant to be. So, if you're on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment, click the link in the description to grab your copy today. Also, check out our Empowerment community on Patreon. Thanks for watching.